Hi guys, this week we're going to do something a little different and kind of fun. Um, hopefully this is uh, going to be an okay angle for you. I've got other things going on, so um, everything's a bit of a mess. So I have this cup, which is one of Robin's. It's 12 ounce with a handle. Um, it's just a, just a really cute coffee cup kind of dealio and I am going I paint sanded it and spray painted it black and now I'm going to do you could call it a galaxy you could call it fireworks um, with mica powders on it so what I'm going to do is I've already mixed my epoxy because nobody needs to sit and watch me do that for four minutes and so I'm going to put a layer of epoxy on this cup just all over, including the handle. And just make sure you get into all of the nooks and crannies. The only thing that you have to be careful with handle ones is um, watching for epoxy pooling around where it connects to the cup. But that's an easy thing to watch for. This cup is so much fun to make. It requires very little skill. It's just it's just a good time. You want to make sure though you don't have anything spinning right directly beside it that you don't want to have um, mica blow over on because it may. So you you uh, you want to be careful about that. You don't have your turners all full and right next to each other before you attempt to do this. So I'm just spreading this around. It's just, just a regular layer of clear epoxy. If you wanted to, you could, if you wanted a little bit more depth to your black, this black is looking pretty good, as you can see. Um, but if you wanted a little bit more depth to your black, you could add a little bit of black mica powder to your epoxy, and that would um, add depth to your black, and it would mask any flaws that you may have in your paint job. So I've got a little pooling going around my edges here so I'm just going to just redistribute that a little bit. So you want you want enough epoxy on here that it's going to when your micas hit it it's going to spread out so it looks more fireworkish or star shooting stars. And I'm going to, part of this is, I know what's going to happen, and <laughs> part of this I have absolutely no clue because I'm going to throw some glow powders and some UV color shifting powder, powders on here as well, just as an experiment to see what happens. Because um, I know I've made a video before about working with UV powders. It's different than micas, so you have to mix them in really well, so I'm not sure that it's going to work, but I have them here, so I thought I would try and see, because there, there's only one way to find I mean, I could ask somebody, but um, on Facebook, but I can just experiment, so that's, I, I don't mind doing that for you. So I've got this good coverage on here, I'm going to take my glove off. And I'm going to torch this. Don't mind the noise for a second. I just want to get rid of the bubbles. You see bubbles in your work that don't don't come out with the torch it could be a hair so um, be aware of that and pull it up okay now comes the fun part so we have a coat of epoxy going it's 
spinning nicely. Now I have powders that I'm going to add on to it and I'm just going to use um, my little metal stir stick here. I could use a uh, regular skinny, I'm going to do a skinny coffee. Um, I'm going to do this one. A skinny coffee stir stick. You could use a regular uh, popsicle stick. Whatever you like. But what you want to do is you want to start with the glow powder. This is a white to blue glow powder, so it'll, it should appear white on on the cup. Um, and we're just going to take it just a little bit on my stick, and we're going to tap it on. We're just going to tap, tap. Yeah, this doesn't spread out like it does with with um, the mica powder. So this is not going to be a good thing. It needs to mix in. So glow powders are not a good thing to do this with. Just FYI. So we've got a couple of spots on here. So hopefully. Those glues will do something. And I'm betting the same is going to be true for this. This is a UV color shifting powder, but it's a nice bright pink. So I wanted to try this. And just get that powder off of there. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. But we'll give it a shot. That's all you do is you just tap, 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 tap. This is working better than the glow. Things like neon colored things work best on a white base. So this is just going to be, um, it's not quite such a bright pink on the, on the black base as it absorbs into the epoxy. But this this will work. It'll absorb into into the epoxy. It's just the glow in the dark won't do it because it needs to be mixed in. So that's kind of a bummer. I'll take my baby wipe and wipe that down and forget use this this one. This is another, this is one of Robin's mica. These are all Robin's um, supplies. Some of them are on the site, some aren't. This is X's and O's. This one is pink, it looks pink, but over black it goes purple. So um, it's not gonna be a pink color. So we'll grab some of that. This is called, did I tell you what it was called, X's and O's? And it's under her, her mica powders. And we're just going to take just a little bit and we're going to tap. And we're just going to tap the side of the stick and let little bits fall off. You're going to get different movement depending on how and where it lands. And you can see it makes streaks. Can you see that? I love doing these cups. They're so much fun. And yes, I'm getting some of it on my mat. It just falls off and goes onto my mat. I'm wasting a little bit, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Because these are just so pretty and so much fun to make. Okay, so I'm going to wipe. This is why I switched over to my stainless one. And I've got some blue here. This one is Burst of Blue. Robin's Micahs come in half ounce sizes, which is quite 
significant amount. Ooh, that's a pretty big burst of blue I got going there. This is a pretty, pretty blue. You just want to tap, and the more lightly you tap, the less comes off. And the more controlled it is. And if you do a great big whacking tap, then you get a mouse like I made over there. But that's okay, because it all goes towards the general look of the thing. So, so far, looking pretty stunning. These cups are so much fun. This one is a different purple. This is an interference type of mica. It is, it is white, and when you mix it, just in epoxy, it is white. But when we put it over black, it is purple. So they, they call that an interference type. Because it's a color changing. It doesn't shift like a chameleon, but it changes color over top of the base. Let's see if I can just throw that on the bottom there. slick so you can see the pretty pretty purple that it made and if you just splat it down it explodes outward so that makes it more fireworky love the way that color comes out and you can blow it a little bit. If you got too much just sitting on the top. Okay, and then I have a chameleon here. This one is a chameleon because it shifts color depending on the angle you're looking at it. So there it's kind of an orangey kind of color and there it's purple. So it all depends on what angle of light you are looking at as to what the color shifts it to. So that's what makes it a chameleon powder. So then we're just going to tap, tap. Just get this spread out a little bit. I don't want a whole lot of this one because it's more um, earthy, orangey kind of color, but I want to make sure I get some of that on there. And then we just let it, let it go. You can, if you want it to move around, um, you can add uh, heat and that'll make it all move however you're gonna lose a lot of your your funky little designs here so anything that's sitting on top you can just blow it because it's not absorbing in I think that looks very cool
So there you have a mica splatter cup. You can call it a galaxy. I like to call it a splatter because it looks very much like splattered paint kind of effect. And all of these different powders that I use all kind of have different weights, so they're going to do different things in epoxy, like this interference spread right out, and I just stuck my thumb in there. The mica powders kind of stayed kind of consistent, but they ran with the epoxy a little bit, and this chameleon made blobs. So it's because it's heavier, it's denser. So that is how you do one of these. So I will um, show you the finished product when it's done.